So yes, I'll be presenting a bit of um, a bit of information around the technical aspects of the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasting's land data simulation system. And so there's lots of people uh, at the centre working on the land data simulation system at the moment. These are just uh, some of them listed here. Um, just as a bit of an overview of what we're going to when we cover in the talk, I'll give a kind of broad overview of what the land data simulation looks like at ECMWF and how that fits into the kind of full coupled operational system used for forecasting. Um, I'll discuss a bit about that we have these two different flavors, one that's operational used for the forecasting, and one that's offline used for reanalyses and sort of seasonal forecast um, initializations. So I'll, I'll cover a bit of the technical aspects behind that. Um, then I'll go into the, the kind of future perspectives that we're looking at at ECMWF. So at the moment, we're, we're running a simplified extended Kalman filter, which is a, sort of a single trajectory type of data assimilation um, method, whereas we're going to be moving more towards kind of a, a, an ensemble based technique in the future. And then if there's time, I'll, 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 I'll briefly cover some other technical developments where we've been looking at um, paralyzing this offline system for reanalysis that we have as we kind of ever move towards higher resolutions for this uh, reanalysis. Uh, and then a little bit about some machine learning work, which is uh, obviously everyone likes a bit of machine learning at the moment. So yeah, we'll talk a bit about that as well if we have time. So uh, how does the land data simulation system fit into this big coupled land data simulation system kind of uh, set up that we have at, at the at the center. So uh, what we have here is if, if we look on the um, on the right hand side here, you can see this is this is the full system, the full sort of forecasting system at the European Center. And so we have these couple trajectories and we have an atmospheric 4D VAR with an outer loop and an inner loop cycling. And at the moment, the land data simulation system is firmly outside of this outer loop cycling. So this means it's kind of weakly coupled. And this is because what we're doing here to uh, calculate the land analyses, we take the uh, analyzed coupled trajectory from the, the 4D VAR as, as our initial conditions. We assimilate some streams of observations relevant to the surface and produce an analysis, which is then used as the initial state for our coupled short forecast. So this is actively being used by the next forecast um, as, as the initial state. And then that is used as the background in the next assimilation cycle. So we have this weak coupling between, between the two. Um, we are uh, working towards bringing this little triangle here into this uh, outer loop cycling, like we have the ocean and the sea ice here at the moment. And that, that will hopefully be there in the next year or two, I think is the plan. Um, and that's where we're going. So for, for any more information on the kind of full system here, we have a paper by Patricia and many others um, in QJRMS uh, called Coupled Data Simulation at ECMWF, Current Status, Challenges and Future Developments, which kind of provides a bit more of a lowdown of what's going on here. So this was uh, released last year. And just to kind of draw your attention, maybe we should put this in tomorrow, I'll, I'll send a message. Uh, there's there's a, a current, um, collection at QJRMS, I think being curated by Patricia, maybe, uh, coupled Earth System Data Simulation. So if anyone's got any papers, uh, feel free to submit them there too. So that's how the uh, the, the LDAS uh, at ECMWF fits into the whole IFS kind of forecasting DA system. Uh, but what does the land data simulation actually involve itself? So this is showing you the land data simulation system as it is at the moment. So at the top row here, we have all the observational streams that we're using for the land surface, these little blue uh, ovals that we have here. So we have satellite soil moisture from both ASCAT and uh, the SMOS product. The SMOS uh, uh, soil moisture that we actually assimilate is created from a neural network approach that was uh, created by uh, the center previously in a previous project. We have in situ observations of two meter temperature and relative humidity. We have in situ observations of snow depth. And then we have satellite uh, observations. Well, it's a satellite drive product from uh, IMS snow cover, which gives us more information about snow cover globally. Uh, then in this next block with these purple kind of rectangles, we have all the different assimilations that are going on for the, for the LDAS. So at the moment, we don't have a harmonized system. We have a few disparate elements which all kind of feed into each other. So we have some 2D optimal interpolations uh, in space for 
the two meter temperature and relative humidity. We have a 2D OI for snow depth. We have a 1D optimal interpolation for soil and snow temperature. And then uh, we have this simplified extended Kalman filter to analyze the top three layers of soil moisture. So the analyzed uh, control vector that we get out at the end of this is, is composed of soil moisture, screen level variables, snow depth, and the um, soil and snow temperature. So that's kind of, this is the broad setup of the, of the system. This is the, broadly the same for both this operational and offline systems that we have. So here we're showing you a little representation of what the difference between these two things is. Basically, the operational system is, is used in this, this feedback to the, to the forecasting, um, whereas the offline systems used in the production of reanalysis data and for seasonal forecast initialization. So here in the offline system, we don't have any feedback with the atmosphere. We're just producing a kind of analysis at the land surface. So there's a few other differences as well. The operational system is all coded in Fortran and it's paralyzed per grid cell using sort of MPI um, type paralyzation. So there's no um, horizontal communication between grid cells in, in, in the Fortran uh, implementation. Whereas for the op, uh, offline system, this is all done in a, in a bunch of Python scripts and the problem is slow solved globally. So there's no parallelization at all. We take this whole global kind of arrays and solve globally. And this is fine at the moment, the resolutions that we're working at sort of 25 kilometers, we, we can do that okay. But as we kind of ever move to these high resolutions for uh, reanalysis data, uh, we're gonna have to look at ways to parallelize this offline system. And we'll talk a bit maybe more about that towards the end of the talk, um, but yes. So that's kind of the broad overview of what the system's looking like currently. That's where we are at the moment. Um, where are we going? Um, we're looking to try and move more and more towards an, an ensemble based land data assimilation system. The nice thing that we do have at the center is uh, a 50 member ensemble of atmospheric data assimilations, which is referred to as the EDA for short. And this is run in parallel to the, uh, the deterministic couple trajectories of the, of the uh, main forecast. So the nice thing about this is you can see this kind of an uh, kind of showing you a bit of an artistic impression of what this looks like here. We basically, for each ensemble member, we perturb the observations and some of the forcing fields. So we have different realizations of, of, of the atmospheric DA across these 50 members. And that's really nice because it gives us information about the spread in our predictions and also the sensitivities for different variables. Uh, this is also true. It, it gives us uh, information at the surface as well. So what we're actually already using in the simplified extended Kalman filter is this EDA information to construct the linearized observation operator. So what we were traditionally doing before was um, having to run perturbed um, forecasts for every uh, member of the control vector and then use a method of finite differences to construct this linearized H. But now we, we're allowed to get rid of that and we kind of get this information from free, for free from the EDA and that gives us the linearized observation operator. But there's also a lot more opportunities to, to use more of this ensemble information within the LDAS and I'll show you a bit of that now. So in particular, what we're going to look at here is soil moisture assimilation just as, a, as an example. And in the current system, we're assuming static background errors for soil moisture of 0.01 meters cubed per meters cubed. So this is in both in time and in space and in depth. So we have those three layers of soil that we're analyzing and each of them we're assuming this 0.01 meters cubed per meters cubed um, standard deviation for. Luckily, the EDA, the Ensemble of Data Relations, provides us a lot of information on the spread. And what we have on the right-hand side here we're showing you the, the standard deviation over the 50 ensemble members of the atmospheric EDA uh, for the first layer of soil moisture. And you can see here, the, the, this is for one year we're cycling through and the scale goes from zero to 0 0.06 meters cubed per meters cubed. So you can see quite often in many places, we're over six times the um, spread of what we're actually currently specifying as our background error covariance in, or background error in, in, in the full system. Um, so we're probably quite underspread at the moment. And that's meaning that we're maybe not paying as much attention to the observations as we would like. 
But what we've actually done now is use these kind of flow dependent errors within the simplified extended Kalman filter in a set of forecast experiments. So this is where we run a full kind of forecast experiment with the full 4D VAR and everything going on. But we've just basically included this flow dependent um, background error in the uh, land data simulation system. So we're showing you the results for that on the right hand side here. Uh, so this might take uh, just a little bit of explanation here. So for each panel, this is showing you a different lead time of the forecast. So uh, the forecast plus 12 hours, plus 24 hours, plus 48, et cetera. And then each panel we have latitude on the x-axis and we have pressure on the y-axis. So uh, down at 1000 HPA, we're around about near the surface. And if we've got very blue colors, we're improving the skill of the forecast by up to 4%. If we've got very red colors, we're degrading the skill of the forecast. And I should say, this is all for the root mean squared error in temperature in particular. And what's nice here, we can see that for the surface, we're, we're seeing these really nice improvements in uh, the skill of temperature just by using this flow dependent background error. Um, so we're really improving temperature kind of up to fairly long lead times in the future just from making this this one change, which is which is very nice to see uh, and kind of uh, is encouraging if we're going to move towards using more and more ensemble information and improving the kind of spreads and the represent, representations of error within the within the system. Um, this was probably a too big a change to put in the operational system yet. So we've kind of had to do some um, uh, approximations to this and basically all we've done is just inflated the errors we've just we've just done a fudge factor and just pumped them up a bit so whereas our previous background error covariance matrix looked like this for a single point these are the three layers of soil moisture we now look like this so we've basically inflated the errors by two for standard deviation but then this is the variance so it's squared um and this is going into cycle 49 r1 in sort of 2024 merged with a lot of other nice changes from the uh, couple of simulation team so just to kind of summarize there where, where we're where we're looking towards here um, that the main things that we're targeting with the ECMWF LDAS is to the removal of this 1D and 2D OI and combining that within a single harmonized data assimilation scheme. So the, the um, sort of SEKF in the, in the first instance, but maybe moving more towards an ensemble technique uh, in the future. We're actively exploring more ways to exploit all this ensemble information we have from this atmospheric ensemble of data simulations of, of ensemble of 4D VARs in the atmosphere. We're also looking at, because although the EDA is great, uh, for some of the land surface variables, it's quite underspread. So we're looking at ways that we can include land surface parameter perturbations within that ensemble. So uh, we're doing things like perturbing the LAI for each ensemble member. And in initial experiments, that's shown quite nice results to increase the spread for the variables that we, we need. Um, so that's good. Um, Two minutes left. Oh, thanks a lot. Cheers. Um, so we're then bringing in the LDAS into this outer loop cycling of the, of the 4D VAR to make it uh, more um, strongly coupled than it currently is. Uh, and then we've got this increased focus on new observational streams for both water and carbon cycle. So we're looking at things like vegetation optical depth uh, and uh, solar, solar induced fluorescence as well. So I, I've got a few other slides, but I think maybe I'll, I'll leave it there. I'll just very briefly mention what, what, what we're looking at here. So this was the speed up of the Python scripts. We've used this Dask um, package where we found very nice improvements of sort of uh, five times or more speed ups by chunking and paralyzing the problem. I'd really recommend people if they need to speed up some Python or some um, big arrays uh, operations. This is really nice. And there's lots of nice um, examples from the Pangeo uh, project, which, which really are really very helpful for, for doing this. You also get a very nice dashboard, which allows you to see what's going on and kind of optimize your, your code even more. And then the machine learning, I'll very just briefly say that, that there's some re been really nice um, kind of initial results. So this is work being led by um, Sebastian, who I think maybe is on, on the call too. Um, and uh, this is kind of replacing a very expensive um, radiative transfer models. You maybe don't want to have to run those all the time. So can we replace those with a more statistical kind of machine learning approach? And the initial results seem to suggest that we, we, we can get to, a, get to get, get a fairly good way towards doing something um, reasonable anyway. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's, that's, I think, all from me. So thank you very much.